Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring hub and spoke IPsec VPNs with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so you might ask yourself at this point, what is a hub and spoke IPsec VPN? It's basically a set of site to site VPNs. However, there is one central site that all the other VPNs have to traverse first to get to the other remote VPN. For example, branch A needs to communicate with branch C or a host in branch A needs to communicate with a host in branch C. The traffic would go through the corporate device here, then get to branch C. Okay, here is our example. We have three VSRXs, VSRX1, 2, and 3, and we have two sets of users. User 1 is connected to VSRX1, user 2 is connected to VSRX3, and a server is connected to VSRX2. And we need to provide secure communication between all of the users and the server. So we need to have bidirectional communication between those and that communication needs to be secure. So in this example, a hub and spoke VPN would work perfectly. We can set VSRX3 as the hub and VSRX1 and 2 are going to be the spoke devices. So let's go ahead and jump to the user devices and show that communication is not occurring successfully. So here is user 1 and attempting to ping the server, the pings are going to time out. So let's attempt to ping the user, or user 2 rather, and again, the ping is timing out. So let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface and configure a hub and spoke VPN to allow this communication. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX3, and we're going to start on VSRX3 since it is the hub device. So let's go ahead and jump to security, IPsec VPN, IKE phase one parameters, or phase one workspace that is, and let's go and create an IKE policy. We're just gonna call this IKE Paul. Set this to main mode. We're gonna use a predefined uh, proposal. Click OK. Oh, that's right, we need to set the uh, the uh, pre-shared key, I'm gonna set that to Juniper. Click OK. And then the gateway, select the gateway tab. I'm gonna add a new gateway, we're just gonna call this IKE gate. Policy IKE Paul, external interface. Now we're gonna set this to a loopback interface and then we're going to leave the site to site VPN radio button selected. And this is going to be set up as a site to site VPN but we're going to do a few specific things that'll turn this into a hub and spoke VPN. And I'll show you that as we go. So for the remote peer, we need to select, actually I do want to change this, the, the name to VSRX1. We do need to name that uniquely. And we're gonna set the peer to 10.11.11.1. Gonna click the plus sign to add that, click okay. Then select the IPsec phase two workspace. And we select IPsec policy, gonna add a new policy. Call that IPsec poll, set this to just the basic predefined proposals, click OK. Then under VPN, we're going to create a new VPN. We're going to call this VPN VSRX-1 because it's going to be going to VSRX-1, remote gateway. Going to select the IK gate VSRX-1, policy, IPsec poll, bind tunnel interface. We need to add the ST0 interface. Going to set the logical unit 0. We're going to put this in the internet zone. Uh, and then we're going to say numbered. I'm gonna set this to that IP address to put on it. And here is where we need to change things that will be different than a standard site-to-site -site VPN. We select the ST interface configuration checkbox under the multipoint tab, and we can leave this at automatic. Now we might have to select manual and add in a manual next hop tunnel address if we're dealing with a device like one of the spokes is not a Juniper device, but in this case, both or all three devices are Juniper devices, so we can select automatic and we can click OK. Then establish tunnels, we want to do that immediately and click OK. And then we need to go back to the IKE phase one and we need to create another gateway. For VSRX2, we can use the same policy. External interface, again, is going to be the loopback interface. And here we're going to set the 10.112.112.2 as the remote peer ID. And then we need to jump back to the IPsec phase two workspace and we need to create another VPN here. And this is going to be the VPN VSRX-2 
a remote gateway is going to be IKE gate VSRX2. We use the same IPsec policy, same bind interface or tunnel interface that is, and we select establish tunnels immediately. Click OK. OK, so now we need to configure the static routing to put certain traffic into the tunnels. So we'll create a new static route and we're going to create a static route. This is VSRX3. So we're going to create a static route to the 172.25.11.0. This is the user one subnet that is behind VSRX1. Set that uh, subnet master 24. And here we need to add a next hop. Now, a thing to keep in mind here, we can't just select the interface, the ST0 interface. That's not going to work. So we need to configure the IP address of the ST0 interface that is associated with ST0 that is associated with VSRX1. And that's going to be the 182.168.1.1 address. And then we need to configure another static route for the server subnet. So 10.5.5.0, set the subnet mask to slash 24. And then we need to add in the IP address VSRX 2's ST0 interface. Now, one thing to point out here is that the security policies have already been configured. And so keep in mind that we're skipping that part for the sake of time. Commit the configuration. Here is VSRX 1. And we need to go to the IPsec VPN configuration. We're basically going to configure just a site to site VPN to VSRX 3, which is the hub. So we can configure the policy. Set this to main mode. We need to match the parameters that we have set on the hub. Okay, then we have the gateway. We need to configure this as well. Select the policy we just configured, external interface. This is going to be Giggy 3 for VSRX1. And then we need to set the, uh, the remote peer address, which that is not it. It is actually 10.100.100.1 since we're using the loopback interface. And click OK. Then let's jump to phase two, IPsec phase two workspace. Create a policy. And select a predefined proposal. Just need to match it on both sides or all sides in this matter. And then go to the VPN tab and we'll create a new VPN. Let's just call this VPN. Select the gateway and the policy. Now I've already configured the ST0 interface just to save time. Click OK. And then commit the configuration. Actually, before we commit the configuration, we do need to configure static routing as well. So with this, We'll configure the IP addresses that we need. So first the user2. Set that to the ST0 interface. And then we need to create a route for the server range. Select the ST0 interface. And then we need to commit the configuration. So let's jump to VSRX2. Do the same thing, just kind of a mirror. Select IPsec VPN. We're going to create a phase one policy, that is. Change the mode to main. Predefined basic proposal works good. Juniper for the ASCII text password, the pre-shared key. And then we need to configure the gateway. Select the policy, external interface. This is just going to be Giggy2. And then the remote peer IP address. So we're going to be peering with the uh, hub device here. Click OK. Go to phase two, configure a policy. And set the predefined to basic again. Click OK. And then under VPN, we need to create a VPN. We're just going to call this VPN for quick 
to do it quickly, select the gateway and the policy interface, the bind tunnel. Again, this was configured uh, previously on VSRX2, just like VSRX1. And note that this interface was also placed in the correct security zone as well in that process. And so we're going to say establish tunnels immediately. We're going to click OK. And then we need to configure the static routing. We need to configure two static routes. And the first one we need to configure, and this is VSRX2, so we need to configure static routes for the users. Set the static route to the next hop of the ST0 interface. Then we need to create another static route. For the user one subnet, and then commit the configuration. All right, here is user one. Let's go ahead and attempt to ping user two. And that works fantastic. That's what we want to see. Okay, so let's try to ping the server. Again, perfect. That's what we want to see. Now, keep in mind, we've sent eight ICMP packets. And so we're going to look at the statistics in JWeb on VSRX3. Okay, so here is the uh, VSRX3 JWeb interface. So let's go to monitor, then IPsec VPN, and then phase two, and we'll be able to see the statistics. And we see that there's been some bytes that have been passed. And we can select by packets as well to see that packets have been flowing. That's great, 12 packets total. Now keep that in mind, we sent eight, but 12 packets have been encrypted and decrypted. Now, why is that? Now keep in mind, we sent it from user one to user two. At that point, it's just basically a site-to-site -site VPN. So four packets were encrypted, four packets decrypted. That's expected. And so what happens where we get the other ones from, where we get the eight from, is when we sent from user one to the server, and in by doing that, traffic was decrypted on the hub device, which is VSRX3, and then re-encrypted to be sent to VSRX2 to reach the server. And one last thing I do want to show, if we click the IPsec SA tab, we see the different IPsec security associations from the different devices, from VSRX1 and VSRX2. And then if we look at phase one, we can see the similar type of output. We see from phase one, VSRX1 and VSRX2, the phase one security associations. And we could jump to the other VSRX devices and view similar outputs. However, in the, for the uh, sake of time, we're going to uh, not do that. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed hub and spoke IPsec VPNs, and then we demonstrated how to configure them using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.